Hey, hey, hey there, peeps. How's it going? I have dressed for the occasion. No, not really. I've been out for breakfast, catching up with some good friends this morning. I have ended out my 23-day road trip around the South Island, New Zealand. And in this video, I am going to summarise my itinerary, accommodation, expenses, and a little bit of general stuff. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee. How about grab yourself a good old Kiwi, Alan P. And um, I am going to get right into this vlog. Now I have my computer because I've got all the prices written down. I've got my trusty little notepad here because I want to make sure that I cover everything in this video. And I'm going to start with, is it safe to travel as a solo female Scooting yourself around the South Island. Absolutely. It is safe to travel in New Zealand as a female. I was out and about at night time during the day, four days by myself, out on hikes, um, accommodation safe. Everything is safe about New Zealand. Come on. It's not a, you can't get to any safer country than New Zealand. So absolutely, you can do it. Travel in New Zealand by yourself, not a problem. Um, so transport. So I decided to hire a car. That's right, I hired a car, car in comparison to a, rent, uh, a camper van or a maxi van with sleeping because I wanted to spend seven days in Queenstown and really practica practicalities with a camper van in a small town where you're wanting to park and drive around. I kind of thought, nah, I need a car. When I looked up the prices for a rental um, car versus a camper, the prices compared quite a considerably amount of difference. I got cheap deal on a rental car. I booked my car with rentalcars.com. I've booked cars with them on numerous occasions and had no problem. I booked the car over 12 months ago for a bargain price of $985 for 23 days. That's right, 23 days. Camper vans uh, at that time compared were about four and a half, five thousand dollars $5,000. So adding on accommodation, cheap car at $985, um, I was thinking, yeah, if I keep the accommodation to under $150 a night, the comparison would be pretty good, which is what I tried to stick to. So let me just get up my budget here. So the car, $985. I booked this car over 12 months ago. I had a plan on my mind, 23 days, booked the car, locked that in, $985. I then added an insurance for $66 to have a zero excess. That was a lot cheaper doing it through your insurance than actually doing it through the rental car. If I was gonna get the zero excess um, with the rental car, that was gonna cost me over like $700. So for the rental car, that was only 1,051 for 23 days with a zero excess. Petrol, I traveled 3,144 kilometers and I spent $568 in petrol. So that's not too bad. So for about $1,500, I had a rental car, including petrol. $1,500 is pretty good value. So that's why I chose a, a vehicle over a camper van. I know I'm gonna cover the accommodation next, but if you're trying to keep your accommodation to less than $150, the comparison is pretty good. And then you have the flexibility of staying in different types of accommodation. Um, so what I'm going to cover is my 23-day plan. I had already booked the car and then I thought, well, where do I want to go? I wanted to enjoy this absolute fabulous country for everything that it has. I didn't just don't want to do one or two nights here, there and everywhere. I wanted to maximize my time in each location. So my plan was two nights in Mount Cook. Um, I wanted seven nights in Queenstown because that's the adrenaline capital of New Zealand and I love a little bit of adrenaline. So I wanted to make the most of my time there. I had three nights in Tianair. I had um, two nights in uh, Wanaka three nights in Friends Joseph Glacier, one night in Hokitika, and I ended at the west coast in Fox River. So that was my itinerary. I needed to plan that around the car booking. 
preferably I would have liked an extra day in maybe Wanaka and maybe a one one day in either Hokitika or Greymouth. That would have been the perfect holiday and I will cover that a little bit later. So the accommodation. So obviously the accommodation I stayed at a number of different types of accommodation. Mount Cook, there's not much to choose from, which is the Hermitage Hotel. That's where I stayed right in in Mount Cook. Um, that one cost me 470 bucks. Uh, Queenstown was the most expensive. I stayed for seven nights in an Airbnb. That was $1,900. But in comparison to staying in an actual hotel or motel, that was pretty good. The accommodation I stayed in was an Airbnb. It actually sleeps up to 12. It wasn't actually for 12 people. I slept there by myself and I had my sister join me for a few nights. But the Airbnb for seven nights was absolutely good value because then you felt like it was home away from home. Um, Tiana, that was $120 a night. I just stayed in a campground in a little cabin. Um, it was obviously just a holiday park. Wanaka stayed in a nice suite that was actually quite a nice hotel. Um, Friends Joseph, I st just stayed in a little wee rainforest cabin. It had enough, it was just, it had a toilet and a, um, a shower there. and self-contained. That was actually only $100 a night, so I was under budget there. So I had one night in Hokitika so that I could break up my, um, my travelling distance between Franz Joseph and Fox River. So that was uh, 155 a night for my one spa room accommodation in Hokitika. And I think I saved the best till last. I stayed at... Um, Fox River is quite a nice little place here. Fox River, I stayed in this little wee self-contained, solar-powered, unique little outdoor batch type accommodation. It was $210 a night. It was absolutely beautiful at the end of my holiday. Um, it was off the grid. Everything was outdoor. I literally stayed outdoors the whole time. The weather was perfect when I stayed out there. Um, it was just enough for two people, one bed, off the grid, outdoor kitchen, living, outdoor bath and toilet, and it wasn't even cold at night. The total combined for my accommodation was 3939 so I went a little bit over budget for my accommodation, but sometimes you want a little bit of luxury, which is what I did. How did I stay connected? So when I left um, Australia, I bought myself a um, little a SIM card from simsdirect.com.au. I'll link below. It was prepaid, had my number before I left Australia. I had 10 gigs of data, which look, I was on the road for 23 days. You know, you can connect to the Wi-Fi, but I like to use a little bit of data, you know. I like to get on Snapchat, a little bit of Instagram when you're not on in between Wi-Fi. And I kind of ran out of data. So I'm not saying don't get it through them. There's a different plan. You can get an unlimited plan, which might be better if you want to do a little bit of internet time outside of Wi-Fi. So I might suggest that might be a better option. The best things I thought were at, wow, Mount Cook. Oh my go! Oh my God! The snow-capped mountains, the blue skies as you're driving in, the white fluffy clouds. It's like when you are driving into Mount Cook, that is just going to blow your mind. I did the Hooker Valley track. Whoo! When you're walking, every every turn, corner you turn, you are just presented with beautiful. Uh, snow capped mountains. Now I was there in October and it wasn't cold. It was cold. When I started my hike it was minus one degrees. Um, but as the day got better it just, oh it was just absolutely beautiful. I went down to the Tasman Lake and whoo! So Mount Cook stunning as you are just looking. You, your eyes are getting sore with the beauty. Uh, New Zealand is just a beautiful country. I have not explored this part of New Zealand, even, even though I'm a Kiwi, I have not ventured really out of Christchurch until now. So another one is Milford Sound. You you are driving between, like you're surrounded by, by mountains, cascading waterfalls, and the Marion's Lake. If you are doing Milford Sound, make sure you do a Marion Lake. That, that hike itself was pretty hardcore, 
but once you walk there and you're there wow it is beautiful that lake um the glacier i was supposed to do a heli hike that got cancelled um but on the last day as i was leaving friends joseph i went to every helicopter um place in the street to see if i could get me a flight and boom yes i was lucky enough to score myself a helicopter flight up to friends joseph as you are flying over the glacier it's like you you do a hike there but you can only see it from a distance and when you are flying over the top you get to stand on it. it's like oh my god that is absolutely amazing driving down glen orkey that road by that lake the road is absolutely stunning it's like you could stop at every nook and cranny it's so beautiful on that drive to glen orkey um, what else? I did the Charleston Cave Experience. Wow, those stalactites and stalactites. Woo, they just blew my mind as well. The West Coast coastline. There is like miles and miles of beautiful coastline. You can, you could stop at every nook and cranny. It's so beautiful. I stopped at Fox River and stayed in Fox River. Even that little wee part of the coastline is spectacular. The Punakaiki um, Pancake Rocks. Oh, gee, it's like you do this little 20 minute walk and wow, it just blew my mind. That little wee walkway took me more than 20 minutes, but that was just absolutely fantastic. What was the best activities I did? Well, I did jet boating in Queenstown. Whoo, you gotta do the jet boating in Queenstown. That was pretty fantastic. Um, a few things got cancelled. I was expecting to do a helicopter flight that got cancelled and I was expecting to do paragliding that unfortunately got cancelled. I did the canyon swing. Oh, that's a bit scary at first, but well, you got to do something like that when you're in um, Queenstown. What else did I do in Queenstown? I did the onsen pools, of course. Um, I did the... Um, what is it? zip lining went to the top of the um the sky tail the sky point we did the luging that was pretty cool it goes pretty fast we did three luges and man you just go up and down up and down and it's done and dusted real quick as a squiz um so what else what i did uh, some hot pools I did hot pools in omarama i did the onsen hot pools in queenstown I did hot pools at my accommodation in Tianea and I did the Waiho hot pools in Franz Joseph. Yep, I love a damn good hot pool. Look, to be honest, they were all pretty good. My favourite though was the Omarama hot pools. Definitely, that is the highlight. It's outdoors. It, 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 was, it, it was a beautiful day, beautiful scenery. You get 90 minutes at those pools in comparison to an hour at the other ones. Oh, the glowworms at the um, at the Charleston caving experience. You do this caving experience. It's like four hours. You're seeing all the stalactites and stalactites. And then you go through one little part with the little glowworms. And you think that's pretty cool. And then you go through this one where you're on your tubes and you're lying on your back. I couldn't get any footage of that. But you're like, Man, the roof is full of glowworms, and that was absolutely mind blowing. What I want to just cover is some of the prices on what I did. You are going to be able to watch all these vlogs because this is going to be my last vlog. So, if you want anything to know about the actual hands on whilst I was there experience, I'm going to link the, link the full New Zealand series up here. So, you're going to be able to go back and check out all these vlogs because I did film whilst I was there, and you will be able to see what I did at the time. Um, now let's just go and have a look. So I, the, some of the things that I did is the jet boating and canyon ex swing experience, I did that as a combo, and that was 419 New Zealand dollars. Yeah, it's not cheap, I know. The onsen pools, I did it by myself, and that was actually $107 just for one person. Um, I actually did horse riding when I was in Glen Orkey as well. I booked that the day before I went. It was um, 175 New Zealand. It was only just like an hour and a half little gig. You know, I've owned a horse in before, but Glen Orkey, the, the beautiful views that you get when you're horse riding down the rivers is whoo, 
Ooh, Glen Audie. Glen Orkey is beautiful. Those rivers are beautiful. So I'd highly recommend you do that horse riding in Glen Orkey when you're in, staying in Queenstown. Or even just take the drive. I did the drive out there in the day, did the horse riding, and on my way back I stopped in at Bob's Cove. Wow, Bob's Cove. you got to go there. Even if you don't go out all the way to Glen Orkey, just do Bob's Cove. It's about 20 minutes out of Queenstown. Do the beautiful walk up to the top and you're coming back through the little wee jetty and the beautiful blue water. Bob's Cove. Recommend that one. I did the gondola and um, three luge rides and that cost 90 New Zealand dollars. And that means that you do three luge rides in one day and we did a pass that covered over three days. Three days we could go back as many times up the gondola as we wanted and we used that multiple times. Um, zip lining, we did zip lining and that was um, $170 New Zealand. I got a discount of 15% because online there was a little discount code. Um, the zip lining wasn't so great on the day that we went. It just about got cancelled because the gondola wasn't working. Um, but yeah, we didn't see any views. But zip lining was pretty cool. It is the... Um, longest tree to tree zip line in the world. We did a wine day tour, a full day wine tour out to Gibbs, Gibston Wineries. We did five wineries. There's a full vlog on that one, and that one costs $149 New Zealand. Now, I didn't do the heli hike in New, um, because that got cancelled, but I did do the helicopter flight that was $385. I did the Waiho hot tubs and Franz Joseph that was $89 for an hour. I actually went to the Kiwi Centre in Franz Joseph that was like the conservation area. $36. You are guaranteed to see a Kiwi. I've seen two of them. Definitely, you're de definitely going to spot a Kiwi in that particular um, centre. And the Kiwis are not behind glass. There's a, obviously a glass thing that's only up to here. And you will see the Kiwis. The Kiwis are there, definitely scrummaging around. It was dark and cold. I didn't get any footage of that, but that was pretty good. You want to see a Kiwi, you're going to see a Kiwi there. Mara, the Omarama hot tubs, that was only $60. That's why I think that was the best one. Cheapest, cheapest one. And it was, I, I really liked them. Outdoors, 90 minutes. Had it all private to myself. Loved it. Um, also did the Milford Sound cruise kayak that was like going to be four hours on the day i booked the cruise it was the cruddiest tr 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 torrential rain ever it was like before i even got on the cruise it was like i was saturated so i was going to get wet on the cruise no matter what it was windy blowing cold it i didn't experience the cruise as intended but you know, if you're going to be out there and you get a perfect day, it would be absolutely spectacular. I did have a kayaking booked as part of that tour, and that the full tour was 229 New Zealand dollars. The kayaking part got cancelled. Thank God, because I actually didn't want to do the kayaking. It was so bad and scungy, and the weather was disgusting. But the cruise wasn't, just the weather. Um, so I'm glad that kayaking got cancelled. But anyway, Milford Sound itself is beautiful. Just the drive out there. If you've got a perfect day, it would be absolutely spectacular. Oh, the canyoning at Charleston. The canyon cave experience. That was 215 New Zealand dollars. That was about a four-hour experience. So pretty much the activities take a big chunk out of your budget. So total combined. So my accommodation total was $3,939. Fuel was $568. Rental car was 1,051. The activities that I did in Queenstown were 1,097. And the activities that I did that weren't in um, Queenstown were $1,360. So the trip for 23 days, excluding food, food is subjective to however you want to eat and whatever style you want to eat. Basically, this trip cost me $8,018. So that was... Rental car, costs, fuel, accommodation, and all the activities, excluding food. So you might think $8,000, that's quite a lot. Well, no, I didn't think it was. I did a lot of free things. I did lots of hiking. I did eat out quite a lot. 
but most times when I was out traveling I had a chili bin that I had um, milk and butter and some cold stuff and when I got to my accommodation I just put that into the fridge because my every place that I stayed in had a fridge I had just a, a stuff that had breads and coffees and and bits and pieces that so most times if I had an accommodation where I was able to just cook up something I just cooked up my own food but anyway that pretty much summarizes New Zealand 23 days on the road 3144 kilometers by myself $8,018 um, total expenses if you were traveling as a, a double two people obviously that would, you'd be able to share the uh, costs in half so traveling around New Zealand as a solo person there's some long long days on the road I think the longest day was actually the the last day Fox River um, back to Christchurch um, it was an absolute blast New Zealand is an absolute, I mean I might be a little bit biased, but New Zealand is an absolutely beautiful country. Different coastlines, different scenery, different climates, different weather. It was absolutely spectacular. I've only touched the surface of the South Island and I wanted to do the part that I did a lot of justice. I'm not just going to drive through and not have a plan. I really wanted to do New Zealand the justice, justice that it deserved. 23 days was only just scratching the surface. Pretty much I'm going to end out this vlog here. Um, if you have liked my video as usual, why don't you give me a like and a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you've got anything you want to know comment below um and i will catch you in the next video peeps cheers cheers peeps cheers